everyone. So today I want to share with you what to do when you've got a really fine, delicate font and you want to make it slightly thicker so that you can use it for whatever it might be. Um, if you're cutting something like, you know, a script font, I see a lot of people ask like which script fonts are really good because you're looking for one that's a little thicker so you can cut it and won't be super delicate. There are ways around that. And so today I'm going to show you how to do that. So with this method, you'll be able to take just about any font and modify it to um, to be able to use it and cut it out and not worry too much about it being really, really delicate. So I started out by opening my Inkscape, which is a free software. If you don't have it already, highly recommend downloading it. it takes a little getting used to, but I promise it's not scary or too difficult for anybody to use. Clicked over here on the text tool and then just kind of made a box, added my text. And now we're going to go and change this to a really, really delicate font. So I'm clicking on T up here, the text and font. And then we're going to look for something that is really, really delicate. I'm looking for something more delicate than this. Let's try... Bear with me, I didn't have a font in mind before I started this video. So <laughs> you're finding the font with me. Um, whoa, that is definitely not a delicate font. I wish I was able to categorize fonts in here. Let's just scroll down this way. Ah, this, well, let's, let's do this one. All right, so once you've selected a font, you'll click on apply. And now that's the font we're gonna work with. All right, so from here, this is still categorized as a font. And when we're working with things in Inkscape, we're really, we want them to be a path, not a font. So I'm gonna click on the little arrow button just to get off the text function, arrow button. Now go up to path and object to path. And now this is a path. And the way to know actually that we're working with a path now, if you click on this little icon on over here for nodes, and you tap, you'll see that now we can kind of select individual nodes. So let's go back to our little um, arrow. We're gonna select everything. And just for the sake of this tutorial, I'm gonna make it bigger so that you can all see it. All right, and now that we've got a path, we can start playing with it and thickening this up. Um, it'd be great, obviously, if all fonts had like a bold function, but that's usually not the case. So that's okay, we can, we can work with it. Now, coming up to the side over here on the right-hand side, we're gonna click on Path Effects, and then this little plus side here. And this is, this window gives you all sorts of crazy options. We are just going to work with the Offset option right here. So click on Offset. And then now from here, what it's going to do is it's going to essentially create um, like a thick border around the entire image. So, over here on offset, we can start clicking on the plus sign and just making it thicker and thicker as we go. And now you can see we've got the same exact font, um, but now it's a lot thicker. Now, of course, I went a little too far, right? You can see here in the F, that little hole is gone. If you don't care, obviously keep going, totally fine, up to you. But I would back it off a little bit just so that we end up with that hole again. And you can see now just how much better this is from what we started with. So in fact, let me show you the two versions of what we have here. I'm going to select this, oops, copy and paste. And then from this one, I'm going to delete our offset. And now you can see the difference between these two fonts. So they're very clearly the same font still, but now we've got an offset. Now to work with this one, all you're going to have to do, let's delete this, is go up to file and then save and save it as an SVG, which will be the default, and then import it into your Glowforge app and you're good to go. I hope you found that helpful. All right, now what we see here is pretty deceptive because this looks like this would be like one nice cut. But if you come up here and go to view, display mode, and then outline, you'll see that it's not actually the L that's into the O and so on. This is how the Glowforge is actually gonna read, read your SVG. So this line over here that overlaps with the O, the part of the L that overlaps with the O, would get cut out of the O and so on, which is not what you want. So let's come over here, 
to the objects tab if you're not already on it. Click on the objects tab. Expand out this grouping. This here means that it's a grouping and select the subpaths. For this next step, it's really important that you select the subpaths because it cannot it cannot work with this grouping. You cannot select the grouping. You have to pick these subpaths. That's something I tend to forget if I don't use Inkscape a lot and I come back, I forget about that. So keep that one in mind. Now go to path and do union. And you see now that that little like cut out of the O no longer exists. It's all connected, which is perfect. That's what we wanted. Now, the G over here is a separate piece. If you wanted to make sure that it was connected as well, which is entirely possible, um, there's an option we can do for that as well. So let's undo the function we just did. You can just click on, oops. All right, so we undid the function. Just do control um, Z. And now we want to come over here to the objects tab and just find the letter G, which is this one over here and move it over so that it now overlaps a little bit with that. That should be plenty. All right. So now, and this is just, if you wanted the G to be fully connected, select the sub pads again and go to union. And now there we go. The G is part of the L and so on. So all the way across our text, it is now combined correctly. This is a better view of what you're actually going to be cutting when you work with it. So when you work in Inkscape, you may actually want to always function in this view. Um, I do or don't depending on what I'm working on, but it's certainly helpful. So now that we've done this part, you just go to file save and it'll automatically save as an SVG and then you can import it into Glowforge, Glowforge's app just as you would any other SVG and you're ready to go.